Rain, rain, go away. Please come back another day. Now it's time for a throwback with Jay. What is going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review. Listen, the last time you probably saw this, I was on the balcony ripped out of my asshole. What I have in front of me is a device that is literally five years old. Now, I've done reviews on this channel for extreme throwbacks. And they're not bad. They're just different from where we were before to where we are now. Now, when you look at this video, when you watch me on the balcony, first off, this may, th I don't think this video was on the balcony. This might have been when I was into that whole square tank phase. I guess I watched a lot of TV shows where you had the Guidos and they had the little instead of the regular guinea tea jammies, it was the square tank ones. And I had them in every single color. I bought them from eBay, all manufactured in China. Loved them. Absolutely. I also started getting a gut, so I realized that it was in my best interest to not wear those anymore because it looked like I was wearing a halter top. <laughs> I'm sure there was a select part of my audience that actually liked it and to it. But that has changed. I've gotten a little bit chubbier, a little bit more knowledge, and now I'm really into this field. I would like to think that I'm somewhat kind of iconic. Maybe. Maybe I'm giving myself too much credit. A Hazer sent me this. Now, I know what you're going to say is there's no way that that is brand new and there's no way I'm reading that correctly. You're right. That is upside down and backwards. That would be the correct way. This is the Vamo. Okay. I think it's the V6. It's either the V5 or the V6. Now, the V5 right there. Fun fact for you. Vamos were originally made by KSD, Kingside. There was a lot of other Vamo styles that came out, and that's what really started the whole Provari and Joytech with their Evic and then their Evic Primo. And, well, no, not the Primo. I'm talking about Evic Supreme way before the Primo. We're talking about styles like this. Not so much a bottom section, the top section. Hell yeah, your fire button here. But that's what started this whole phase, and it grew so fast. Everybody loved it. And Pravari, I don't think were made in America, but they were manufactured in America. And now that company is defunct, but the P1s, the P2s, the P3s, that was the whole generation, and this is what started it. It wasn't until about... Two years of coming out is when they just started to phase down because Hannah was coming out with the box mods, Hannah mods out of uh, Ohio, I think. And then that started the whole box mod craze and people went away from the tubes. And this is even after mech mods. They just, it wasn't about tubes anymore. It was all about boxes because that just was convenient. Then the tubes came out, boxes went away. Then it was all about boxes and now it's all about all-in-ones. But this, the Vamo series, the Vamo V1, V2, V3, the V4 is very difficult to find. The V5, and then the V6 was the, the later one that came with the battery. It came as a big box. Sort of looked just like this. They didn't do a lot of power. There was a couple times where I've reviewed Vamo-esque style things on this channel, whether I was in this position with nothing on the back wall. Oh my God, check out that video right there. I was very thuggish, but of course things have changed. So what we're going to be looking at today is the Vamo V6 and brand new packaging the way it came. I hope it works. And a Pro Tank 2. Because I'm not going to have a lot of things that are going to fire on this. Because typically back then, the coils, the lowest you would really find them is 1 ohm. You could find 0.8, but they were rare. And then this Kangertech sub tank came out and those were 0.5s. A lot of mods did not approve of those coils. They had to make all new mods because the Evix and the Evix Supremes didn't fire. You, you could fire a .5 down with the Evic, And this was really, this piece right here, I would have to say is what revolutionized the regulated cylindrical mods. 
Before we called them tube mods, cylindrical was the word because that's what it's shaped like. So I, I don't really want to comp I don't think it's a fair assessment for me to compare the Vamo V6 with a modified Evic Primo. I keep saying the Evic Primo. That's not it. It's Evic Supreme. But this that bottom section here is a Bod by Leo, which is a high-end tube. It's actually a telescopic. This tube is about $180. But it fit on the bottom of the EVIC, because it was a very generalized size, you see? I even contacted Joytech back in the day to get this to have a DNA inside of it. And then I had Brandon, I would have to find it, where we took this section right here, and we did a side-by-side. -side. Took the tube from this, put it here, but we couldn't get it to work properly. And then I want to say KSD made one. I don't know if I did a review on it, but... Mine was more rustic, and this is when I first originally started work, working with Brandon. That's how long I've been with Raven's Moon or Kryptonite Tanks or just Brandon. So anyway, let me just bring this down. I'm going to show you what's inside of the box. I, I'm, there's not really going to be a whole lot to go over. They were extremely basic for what they were. I don't even know if it's going to be able to handle the batteries that I'm going to throw at it. So without further ado, this is true. A round two of version V6 Vamo by KSD, who I believe was a subsidiary of Kenger Tech. So without further ado, flip it. So this is the ProTank 2. I don't really need to go too much over this, but basically the old school-esque type of tanks didn't really have adjustable airflow. What you had was a very small airflow port that would go through the coil, kind of like they do now, but now you can spin it. But back then they would be open like this, and what would happen is you would unscrew the bottom. You see it right there? And then that's where your coil would go into. You can kind of see the threading. And then the bottom of that coil would touch the top of the mod. Very, very simple. And oddly enough, this hazer sent me some 1.8 jammies for the Pro Tank 2. It's quite awkward that this is where we're going back to, though. So now these are very, very old. This is the coil, and they used to use silica wicks. Fun fact for you, silica wicks you actually cannot burn. You can still get a dry hit, but yeah, it is what it is. I even did some videos of teaching people how to rebuild these, which I will post the link in the corner above. But basically, you'd pull this out, and you'd see a leg here, and then a leg on the inside that would make contact with the positive. So, if you wanted to rebuild these, you'd remove this little grommet. This right here would pop off. I'm probably not going to be able to get this off with bare fingers, and then you would see the coil down there. And they were typically just regular rounds, spaced out wire, very, very simple. And it would take a while for these to break in because, again, the silica doesn't really absorb like cotton does. But we're going to screw this in. And go just like that. And then this would go inside the tank. But to fill them up, you would go like this. And fill it up right here on the side. So we're going to use a very, very thin juice. Something I know that will wick pretty good. 3 milligrams, but listen, even 1.8 now with cotton is a little bit different than 1.8 then with silica wick. A little is, a, is an understatement. Drastically different. Back then, you had to use higher nicotine. You really couldn't even find 3 milligrams. I mean, you could find zero, but the breaking down... Yeah, see, no bubbles or nothing. You just kind of wait. And that is a 60-40. 50-50 would be ideal for a tank of this caliber from... Oh my god, I want to say 2014, Pro Tank 2 Mini. Okay, so here we go. Back then, the cellophane was very, very cheap. That is, in fact, brand new. No manual, no nothing. Wow, look at that. There is no fingerprints on it. Now, it makes me wonder if back then... There were fingerprints, and I just didn't notice them because I wasn't as detailed as I am today. Those scratches are actually natural. That's more of the brushed finish. Well, you can't really see it. Back in the day, we used to have a lot of customers where this would stop making contact, and this little pin right here actually comes out. I, d I don't want to play with it too much, but this would come out, and then you'd have to put different little gaskets and O-rings in there because they didn't assemble them like they do today. It wasn't more of a permanent solution. And then this section right here, they had different rings that you could put on, or they even had different tanks that would work. But take a look at that. 
that is what you call an ego connection with the 510. They always had both, so that would allow you to take something like a pro tank that has that weird connection on the outside that would screw into this like this. And now even ego pens have that same type of connection. So same type of thing, and then if you had a regular dripper, whether it was a 20, well, you wouldn't put a 24 on this, but you'll see here that it'll actually thread in. Well, that's a bad one because of the 510 connection on that. Let me use something with a shallower 510. You see? And then that would thread in. Now, back then, you would only really put a 22 on the top of here, but you saw a lot of pro tanks and then regular, uh, the original pro tanks. That was kind of it. I mean, it was, it was just all Kanger at that point. And then it would go just like that. Does look funny, but you have to realize that back in the day, that's the way that you vaped. But regular 18650 in there, you would do positive side up typically. Just like that. Spring loaded on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. System on. And then there's your volts. You see that? So once you put these two together, you're going to have power voltage, LCD display, LCD. So power voltage, if we press sideways or down, you would have voltage output or power. So let's just go with power. You press to the right, LCD display. You could have a display power, resistance, battery. Let's just go with, well, a, yeah, let's go with battery because I don't remember what happens at that point and then you could turn the screen on and off. So we'll just let that time out. Fifteen watts sounds about right. Let's say, yep, fifteen watts. But we're gonna bring this down to about eight or nine. And it was always safer to do voltage because back then people didn't really care about watts; they just wanted three point seven, three point eight volts. So going back to that again, press the two together: power voltage, power output, voltage output. And now you can adjust it like that. And 3.7 was always safe. You know, looking back at this extremely large configuration of Vamo V6, let's bring it on the top. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fit this whole damn thing on the screen. Here it is, the Vamo V6 with the Pro Tank Mini 2. <laughs> oh my Yo, this thing is massive. Here we go. Uh, we're working with, uh, let, let's just make sure we're, we're going to do 3.7 volts because that's saying the bare minimum of the amount of power we want to use to fire this up. Here we go. Let's do it. Actually, not that restrictive. Wow. Go up to 4.1 volts. See, but this 3 milligram that I'm vaping on tastes like zero. I'm just getting vapor production. I'm not even getting flavor. And, and that's really the caveat with using silica wicks. Okay. The crazy part is, even now, the mouth-to-lung configurations are even tighter than this. Like when you get these RTAs or some of the, the ohm tanks or the regular, uh, you can't call them sub-ohm tanks because they're 1.0, 1.2. So just regular tanks, they've become more restrictive now than what they were back then. This was revolutionary, man. You would use this with an 18 milligram, and this is how people vaped. There was no all-in-one devices. There was there were some billet boxes, but that didn't come out till later, like way later. 2016, I think, was the first year. The version one, it might have been 2015. Yeah, I think 2016. But this was it. Devices just like this. This is what you would carry. So when people say, oh, you can't, you can't quit smoking and go to vaping from a product like we have today, that's bullshit. It is. Because this, well, not this specific device. What I used was a clearomizer, which was kind of a tank like this, but the wick was all in the center and silica wicks would hang down like a Vivinova. That's what I used on the EVIC. I loved it so much. This is truly the biggest throwback that I've ever done because this is what we vaped on. And although it looks weird, as you're sitting there, it kind of looks like a wizard staff. 
for lack of, not a wizard sleeve, a wizard staff, this is what we all knew. There, there was nothing else like there is today. Super simple, adjust the power up and down, and you see that it's picking it up at a 2.2, when in fact the coil is rated at a 1.8. That was very, very typical for this time frame. Everything was going to be jacked up. Everything. It's very difficult to do a direct loan. Very difficult. So many people would buy the Evic Supremes when they came out. What would happen is the Ego section up here on the top, same type of deal than the Vamo V6, would actually fail. And we would sell those because they came off on this. And see, I have a little Vape Life logo on there. Oh my God. And then there's the screen. And they had different variations. So let's see. See how well that looked? See, how, look, look how good that looks. And then they had a, a V2, a V3, and then you would hook this up to a PC, and then that's it. Let's see what this picks up at. 2.8 this picks up at. And then to adjust the power, you would spin the little rocker. Let's do, look at that. As you spin that, oh my God. Look at that, real-time updating. Joytech. Joytech. Wow. Wow. Absolutely amazing. It's just so crazy holding a product like that, knowing that that's where I came from and this is where we're at. It's such a different type of vape configuration, but you transition into that. It's just something that I've enjoyed doing for so long and I'll continue to do till the end of my days. It's just crazy looking back at a device like that and where we are. I, there's no words for it. So if you're looking at picking up something like this, it's going to be difficult to find a real authentic one because this was extremely cloned. You want something from KSD. That's the people that made this. Not that Rainbow One or the, the Rise 7 was one. There was a lot of different companies that made this exact type of thing and then pushed it all as a Vamos V6, like how we see clones. You don't see clones too much now, although they're still made. Back then, it was massive, and it was really in the high-end community and very, very popular selling products. So all in all, man, can't rate this, obviously, because it's super old. Just a really, really nice retro type of device, and I've kept it real. Have you?